Hey everybody, this is Channel Hot Monkey, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a flat styled long shadow effect like the one you see on screen using GIMP. Without too much small talk, we will immediately get to business. Let's just minimize this and open up GIMP. Now before we do anything, I want to make it clear that the version of GIMP that I am using is 2.8.14, so that's just something you might want to have in mind. Let's close that and we will begin by creating a new image. For the width we're going to go 1920 and for the height we're going to go 1080, so we're going full HD. Now we're going to hit OK. First things first, we don't want our background color to be white. Instead of that, we are going to select a soft red flat styled color. I'm going to select my bucket fill tool and fill my image with this color. Now this is just a color that I prefer for this particular tutorial. If you want, of course, you can choose any color that suits you or your style. Next thing we're going to do is add some text to the image. So I'm going to select my text tool and draw a rectangle shape. Inside that, we are going to put in our text, but first off, we're going to choose the color of the text. We're going to go with white. I'm going to say OK. For the font, we're going to go with Sago UI. There are a lot of Sago UI fonts, but the one that we're looking for is the Sago UI light font, which has a bit of a flat design touch to it. For the size of our font, we're going to go for something like 150. We're going to try it out like that. If it's small, we'll adjust it later. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to type in YouTube. Now, as you can see, this size is about right, at least for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale down my text rectangle so that I don't have any unneeded space. I'm going to go up here and select my alignment tool. Make sure that my text layer is selected. Click on the text and then we're going to align it on the horizontal perspective and on the vertical perspective. So right now it's pretty much centered. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to duplicate this text layer. So we're going to make sure it's selected and we're going to click on this icon right here to duplicate it. Next thing, we're going to hide our top text layer. So we're going to click on this eye next to it. So make sure that the top text layer doesn't have a little eye icon and the bottom text layer does. Now you're going to select the bottom text layer. We're going to go back to our text tool, click on the text, and now we're going to change the color to black and then we're going to say OK. Now with the middle layer selected, we're going to right click on it and say layer to image size. Next thing, we're going to go up here to filters. Of course, make sure that the middle layer is selected because that's going to be the layer with our shadow. So make sure it's selected and go up here to filters. That's right, filters. Blur, motion blur. Make sure that linear is checked. For the length, we're going to go maximum. And for the angle, I like going somewhere around 225. There we have it. Now we're going to hit OK. OK, so when it's done, you're going to be left with a smudge that looks something like this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring back our top text layer just so that we can see it. Now let's zoom in a bit by hitting plus on our keyboard. We're going to make sure that our middle layer is selected. That is the layer that has the smudge right now. Right click on it and say alpha to selection. Now you're going to go and select your bucket fill tool. Make sure that the foreground color is black. Make sure that fill whole section is checked. Now we're going to zoom in to our smudge. Let's zoom out just a bit more. 
So just click on the smudge and keep on continuously clicking, clicking until it gets as dark as possible. Now, it's not going to be able to be perfect, but just get it as dark as possible. So once you get something that looks like this, you can stop clicking. Next thing you want to do is make sure that your shadow layer, that is the middle layer, make sure it's selected. Right click and then you're going to go alpha to selection one more time. Now we're going to go over here and select our paintbrush tool. We're going to make sure that the opacity is set to maximum, that's 100%. We're going to select a hard brush and we're going to set the size to relatively large. Of course make sure that your foreground color is black. Then you're going to go over to the selection that is selected and you're just going to paint. Don't worry about painting outside the shadow because it's not going to happen if you followed all the instructions that you saw in this video. Okay, so once you're done with that, you want to go up here, click on select, none. Now what you want to do is click on your middle layer, your shadow layer, make sure it's selected and then click on duplicate layer. We're going to select the original one. Click on your move tool, select the shadow and just move it down but make sure that the borders of the shadows are aligned. Okay right there should be fine. Now it's still not long enough as you can see so we're going to have to duplicate it one more time. We're going to select our original shadow layer, we're going to duplicate it again, select the newly duplicated layer. Make sure that your move tool is enabled, click on the shadow and just move it down and finish it. Again you want to make sure that the border of the shadow is aligned on the left and on the right. So that should be about fine. Okay now that this is finished you want to zoom out and we're going to hide our text layer and our background layer so that the only thing that we see is our shadow. Now we're going to go to image and we're going to say merge visible layers. You're going to get this dialog box. What you want to click is merge. Now let's bring everything back. Now select your shadow layer and bring down the opacity. I like going down to about 25% or so. Okay, let's leave it at 26. Select the shadow layer, right click and say alpha to selection. Now what you want to do is go over here and select your blend tool. And for the foreground, select the color of the background of your image. So that's the light red that we chose on the beginning. Say OK. And down here, you're going to select foreground to transparent. That's FG to transparent. Now you're going to draw a line like this. Go to select, none. And there you have it. One more thing that you may want to do is select your text layer, go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, leave these settings as they are and hit OK. Now as you can see we have a new drop shadow layer and we're going to bring down the opacity even more. Let's leave it somewhere around 35. Once you're finished, you're going to want to export your image. You're going to click on File, go down and find Export As, click on it. On your left hand side, you're going to set a location. I'm going to choose my desktop and up here, you're going to set a name for your picture. So I'm going to go with YouTube Long Shadow and I'm going to save it as a .png file. Now I'm going to hit Export and since I already have a picture that has this name, I'm going to click on Replace. We're going to leave everything as it is right here and make sure that the compression level is set to the highest. So that's 9. Then you're simply going to click on export. And there you have it. A drop shadow created quickly and efficiently using nothing but GIMP. So that will be all for this video. I really hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and share the video with your friends. For more similar content in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I'll definitely see you in the next one. Stay strong.